Hey guys, it's Kim here and welcome to my top five games of 2014. I'm joined today by Rhythian. Hello. Should we just dive straight into this? Let's just let's just go. Let's okay. just jump straight into I, it. I know you got a lot to say. So what is your number five game of 2014? Okay, this might be a little bit controversial, but I, I'm just I'm just gonna go for it. Number five is World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor. Whoa, now, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Yeah, I know. I thought that would be your number I one. I know, and I... Everyone I've talked to said that yeah, would be your number exactly. one. Exactly. And if you had asked me this maybe two weeks ago, uh -huh. three weeks ago, it probably would have been. Uh -huh. End game is so lacking right now. There's a problem. <laughs> the leveling experience is really good. Mm -hmm. it, it, they've, they've done a lot of good things. The storyline where you level through Draenor is really cool. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of cool shit, really cool cutscenes and stuff. And then you hit end game, and you find yourself just... Logging in twice a day to do your garrison missions and then logging off, unless mm -hmm. you have a raid that night. Okay. Because if you don't do PvP, then that's it. That's it. You have no reason to really do anything else. Like, in theory, you could, I don't know, because Apex's dailies are boring. There's no reason to do the daily heroics. There's there's no daily quests to do. There's no real end game things to do at all. You log okay. in. Okay. For raids only, and if you do the raids, that's awesome because the current raid that's out is cool, and I'm really looking forward to Blackrock Foundry. But if you don't, the game is pretty much dead. Like yeah. a lot of the people I've been playing with have, have just stopped now because they're not raiding. Like I'm raiding with Silas, but we're raiding kind of hardcore. Um, mm -hmm. But everyone else on Ventrilo and the gang, they've just sort of stopped. But I see them no playing every day. To... They they log in, they play a little bit, and then they just stop. Because okay. there's just nothing else to do for them. Unless you raid, and I raid three nights a week. And yeah. that's that's a little bit more hardcore than I usually do. But but if I wouldn't, then I'd basically be never be logging in. So I feel like Blizzard is sort of screwed up endgame. This is something they generally solve as they continue to put out content patches. 6.1, 6.2, 6.3. Mm -hmm. They generally put in more new cool stuff that goes along. So yeah, this is a problem that they will solve. But the fact is right now, I unless you want to level another alt. And I have nine level 90s already, so I mean, uh, what do you, I don't know what to do, you know, yeah. it's, it's just lacking, it's lacking. So, so are you really sad now? Because I, I know you guys were so excited when it first launched. We like... were incredibly hyped, and I did feel that, aside from all the technical issues, it really did live up to the hype. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Endgame now is, is, is a little bit dead. So. But, so what's it like though in terms of lore? Because you're sort of nor known in the Yogg's cast for being the lore master. You know everything am, yeah. about World of Warcraft. Like we can just say, I need this mission with this guy and you know exactly who we're talking about and, and Usually, what's going yeah. on. Yeah. So how do you feel, does that live up to your expectations? <laughs> Honestly, no, and that's another part of the problem. Uh, mm. It was such a cool idea to go back to Draenor, like alternate universe, things are different, things are really cool. But it feels like Blizzard just they don't really want to go into much detail with it. They're so scared of people uh, spending too much time thinking about alternate timelines and pa paradoxes and stuff. So they just sort of like, all right, this expansion is going to be about fighting the old orc warlords, and that's it. Everything else we kind of just forgot about. So you run up just seeing things that, oh, that could be such a, oh, okay. It's just over. Like mm. some of the warlords get taken out depressingly easy some oh. of the coolest things that could happen are uh, they just glossed over a lot of cool ideas that could happen like we could, we could really really explore the idea of like the past but also the differences between the two timelines and so on but it feels like they just don't want to do that they were just looking for another set of villains because they've already killed off every other villain they have <laughs> yeah. so we got these ones and that's the one we're dealing with and then we're pretty much done so again i feel like they still have room to deal yeah. with that in the upcoming patches. We have a while until the next expansion pack, hopefully. So there is hope. And it is a good game. I mean, it's on the top five list for a reason. Yeah. But yeah, the last two, three weeks or something have made me a little bit disillusioned. So it's oh, only man. in spot number five. I, you've shaken my faith in the world yeah. now as well, Rithian. I was so sure that you would be like Mr. Number One. So, wow, okay. I'm, I am I don't really know where this is going. I'm free-falling. I'm free-falling, Rhythian. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it's crazy. So what would you want to see in the next World of Warcraft expansion? Well, honestly, though, I want to go back to Azeroth, to the main Azeroth world. I, mean, mm -hmm. I want to see 
continuing storylines. I want to see a lot of stuff that's been hinted at being picked up again and finished. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of stories that have like sort of ended a little bit abruptly, that, that have like been hinted at but never quite finished. I want to see a lot of those things being fully sorted out. Like I mm-hmm. want to see what happened with the Abyssal Abith- Depths with Neptulon. I want to see what happens with Laria and Tralion. I want to see more uh, what Kil'jaeden's uh, plan is uh, and the Burning Legion. Mm-hmm. I want to see a lot of that sort of stuff being brought fully to the fore and finished properly. I also want to see them continuing to start building up new characters. Characters that are introduced maybe back in uh, the Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King. I want to see them continue to build up so that they can start meaning something. One of the things that were so successful about Mr. Pandaria was Garrosh Hellscream. Even though he basically just became more Hitler in the yeah. end. Um, the part of it was so good about him was that he was pretty much introduced back in the Burning Crusade. He was a World of Warcraft only character. He wasn't in any of the old Warcraft games, yeah. which is what made him so interesting. But we could see him grow throughout the expansions, becoming more and more like, first he was a big emo wuss in that run, <laughs> and then he became a bit more badass, and then yeah. he became a little bit more bloodthirsty, and then he sort of grew into the Warchief role when he was a little bit honorable, but still pretty bloodthirsty and hating the Alliance. And then eventually he just went straight off the deep end and became just incredibly evil, and we killed him eventually, which was nice. Or yeah. defeated him at the end. And I want to see more of that stuff. I want to see... Because there's been too many times now. They keep just going back to these classic characters that we saw in Warcraft 2, 3, uh, and Frozen Thorn and so on. But we're sort of running out of them, which is why we got the problem with this expansion pack. Let's go back to here. Like a bunch of dudes that were already dead. We had to go back in time to get some villains. Yeah. So I want to see them build on those characters so that maybe if they don't necessarily become villains or major characters now, then two expansions from now, three expansions from now, so that we have something that we built on. Yeah. That's the something I think they need to work on. Okay, cool. So now that I'm lost without a map and I'm questioning <laughs> who I am right now, what is your number four game of well, 2014? We're going to stay on the same path, actually, because okay. number four is Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. Okay. So this obviously was in uh, beta for quite a while before, but it was officially released in 2014, and uh, this is where it's basically become huge. Mm-hmm. Hearthstone is incredibly fun. It's just really, really cool. I don't know if you ever played Magic the Gathering or, or any I've other dabbled. type of like card games. You've dabbled very yeah. little bit, yeah. I played a bit Magic the Gathering. I played um, a fair bit of the um, Duels of the Planeswalkers games, which yeah. are limited but cool. And uh, a chunk of uh, card games though, although, although I was never like a huge massive fan. Yeah. But I feel like in many ways Hearthstone just took what was great about Magic and just like boiled it down to the very essentials and they just such a polished way really embraced what was so good about being a digital card game. You could really Mm -hmm. use the randomness and and get all the awesome effects and have the computer do all the rules thinking for you. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. It was really, really well done. It was slick, fast, beautiful easy to learn uh, and hard to master, which is always the key for these type of things. Um, and as even now, with the Goblins versus Gnomes coming out, they just fully embrace the idea of randomness, which mm. I think is brilliant. Because there is good randomness and there is bad randomness. Bad randomness is stuff like, um, there's a legendary card, uh, Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Oh, yeah. And he has, um, he basically, at the end of his turn, just eight damage to one enemy. And it could be an enemy on the board or it could be an enemy on you. And that, in many cases, just, it's like a flip of the coin if you're going to win the game or if you're not. It's just, it's just really bad randomness if you see like a final being decided based on that or not like it's it gets a little bit sickening when you see the same guy constantly getting luck 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 yeah. luck luck and winning but in goblins versus gnomes you have stuff like get like when this legendary card dies get literally any random legendary to take its spot that's just such a huge pool of cards it's very random it's, it's embraced a lot of those cool things and it makes for some really entertaining watching um although yes it is more random based but the point is that usually really good uh, players learn how to deal with luck because otherwise you wouldn't see the same people at the top all the time mm, yeah i don't know you, you you played a fair bit of arson i know but not as much as the rest of the office no I think, definitely 
they've uh, they've got quite into it. Like a well, lot of people will just buy a lot of cards. That's the thing. I refuse to invest in it. Like I, yeah. I, I get that moment. Like you know, in at the uh, the movie Zoolander, and at the end when Will Ferrell's character is just like you know he can't even turn left. I feel like <laughs> I'm in crazy town. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, feel yeah, a yeah. bit like that with Hearthstone, and that everyone's spending money on it and playing it, and I'm like, why do I want to spend lots of money on digital cards yeah. that mean nothing? Nothing. Exactly. But ultimately, <laughs> well, yes. it's screwing me over because I have a crappy deck that you know it I is that thing, I tried like, I tried to play against Duncan and Duncan has yeah, so many legendaries. You spent about two hundred pounds on that at least. Yeah, it's incredible. He destroyed um, me. So how much have you spent on it? Not honestly, for Go Goblins vs Gnomes, I've spent a total of zero dollars okay. so far. So yeah. I've spent a chunk for for the original Hearthstone throughout the year, but mm. considering like how long it's been time. Pretty low compared to most people. Yeah, I, I probably end up buying like a twenty pack or something eventually, just mm -hmm. because I want to feel like I have some of the cards to deal with. Yeah, but it is it works this way. This is how these sort of games work, and and it isn't really viable to play unless you buy nothing. Like in, you can, it is possible, yeah. but, but it's, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a lot of playing. It's gonna be a lot of grinding mm. for you to compete because the simple fact is that. Yeah, you, you can make a very basic deck, yeah. you can slowly buy a little bit, you can disenchant to get some key cards, but you will always be behind to yep. someone who bought like 200 decks and can yep. mix and match with the best cards in the game, pretty much. Okay, so that's your number four game. Yes. So where are we going for number three? We're sticking with the fantasy theme. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are going straight to Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. Oh my god, do you know what? what? Apart from World of Warcraft, this is the runaway game of Yogg's Cast 2014. Yeah, I can imagine so. I can imagine so. It's, it's, just, it's just really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I think what really made people like it so much is the, the complete and total surprise. Because it seemed like such a weird ripoff. Like, okay, clearly like Assassin's Creed, uh, parkour type thing, mm -hmm. Batman, uh, combat, mm -hmm. and okay, yeah, another Lord of the Rings game. When is the last time we saw a good Lord of the Rings game? I don't even remember any. No. Like, and it was just like, oh, okay, so we're, we're gonna be some guy with a ghost and with magic powers. Yeah, I guess that could be sort of fun, but eh. And then it just hit you with how, how well designed it all was. The combat just felt really good. Like, they really took the best bits of Batman and put it in there. Mm. Um, the, there was technically parkour, but it wasn't really based around that sort of idea. Just like no. you had the mobility, you could climb, you could jump, but it wasn't really like scale a massive chapel, church and whatever. Yeah. That wasn't really the point. And they put in lots of stuff to find, lots of cool things. And most of all, it, you just felt like an unbelievable badass every time you fought anything. Yeah. Um, you had the, the awesome stealth mode. The bow shooting was really cool, not to mention the sword play was great. And then, of course, the, the real, real key to making this game so good, the nemesis system. Mm. That was just what made this game so special. Yeah. Because it made you have these sort of organic story that come along from you just playing the game and things just happening. Like these orcs are all randomly generated. They all have their own random names and they're all random abilities. But they just sort of become their own their own things, and you create this little thing. They all have their own little. Um, they have this like th three or four different orc voices, yeah. and they even have their small little personalities. If they're stupid or if they're smart, some of them are actually really serious. Some of them just make jokes when they like taunt you and so on, and and. Yeah, you have to figure out a way to find them. You you hunt down their weaknesses. If one of them happens to kill you, they gain power and get promoted. And you have to hunt them down. Uh, they fight between each other. You have to decide like which one of them you want to kill because the other one will get power. Or you can try to kill them both. It made for organic storytelling that mm. built up these these nameless, randomized orcs and turned them into something. Yeah. And one of the coolest bits was towards the very end of the game, Right before you go up against one of the big bad bosses, you fight this like big chunk of orcs, and they're led by your your major nemesis. Yeah. And he stands there and shouts at you. The problem I had was that I had killed all my real, real major nemesis because <laughs> I had made sure to hunt them down. Yeah. So I had one of the random earlier nemesis I yeah. killed like two times but never quite killed. So he died first out of yeah. all of the orcs. He died first, <gasps> oh and I had everyone else around. But I love the idea though of yeah. bringing someone back, not just like a storyline character but someone you have built up uh, yeah. it's throughout the gameplay 
I love the idea as well of like orc promotion, like it's an yeah. orc promotion system. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really cool idea. And I just, they I just, just got go this idea of like employee captains. of the month orc, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, with his little portrait. Oh, he, he did real well. <laughs> you see him in the in the wall there. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got April. I've I've got this locked in. I've killed the ranger three times and yeah, yeah, yeah. like run an entire gang of slaves off a cliff. Thumbs up. <laughs> you know? Promotion for you. Exactly. And I just I just got this image of like Sauron just like choosing them. <laughs> giving them a thumbs up yeah exactly <laughs> and then they get like a little medal and a gold yeah. star that's uh, great no oh it was a, such a great surprise shadow mortar yeah. was an amazing surprise and it was thoroughly enjoyable uh and really really fun so that deserves the number three spot i think awesome so now that we've hit now, now, that was my that was going to be my guess for your number one so i'm mm. still i'm still guessing this is tense. i don't think i don't think you'll be able to guess my number one actually because this is one that came up pretty early in the in, in the year but okay we'll, we'll keep it we'll keep it for we'll, now we'll keep, keep it for rolling now. okay so number two number two the this technically the first okay I'm just going to say what it is. It's The Wolf Among Us. Okay. Now, episode number one came out very late 2013, but uh -huh. the other four all came out in yeah. 2014. And it's, I think, so far, and uh, granted, I have yet to play the Game of Thrones one from Telltale, mm -hmm. but I think Wolf Among Us was the best way to do the whole Telltale adventure episodic gaming so far. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was just an amazing world to explore. First of all, I had read the comics before yeah. I um, I played the game. Yeah, I was going to ask comics. you that. Yeah. yeah. And I really, really, really enjoyed the comics. Um, I, I read it up to like episode 70, issue, I guess it's called in uh, comics, issue 75, which is a really logical end point. I know they continue yeah. after that, but I, I, I stopped for now. And then I went into the comics, uh, or I'm sorry, the game, and it was great to see all these characters that I mm. knew before. And I know that a lot of people hadn't read the comics at all, but they still really, really like them because it helps that they're all fables. So you, you yeah. get the idea of like, oh, it's the Big Bad Wolf. It's Snow White. It's X. It's Y. It's Z. You know, they, yeah. they knew these things. And I felt that as a whole noir detective with, you know, brawls and like a little bit of a seedy life and that sort of thing, it just worked really well for an adventure type mode. The thing about Walking Dead games, which I really do enjoy, is that they're really, really good because it forces you to make hard decisions, but it's hard decisions in a different way. It's always about this guy is sick, should we cut off his leg? Should we leave him behind? Which yeah. one do we save? And there's just zombies coming, this is zombies coming. Yeah. In this, it felt like you had so much more to do. Yeah. There's only so much you can do, in Walking Dead zombie land, because there's just zombies everywhere and everything's really bad. Uh, this is all like very depressing and mm. like, is there any hope? No, there's not. There's just zombies. That's basically <laughs> what happens. There is no hope. There is just zombies. There's no hope. There's just zombies. <laughs> but in and this you have Fable Town, which is such an interesting world, and yeah. you feel like you can enter any house and you'll find an interesting character there and you'll find oh how is this who is this from a fable yeah. what kind of shape does it take what kind of interaction does he have with other fables like how wh how will this get bar in into the whole fable society they have yeah. the underworld the bars the characters and it was just great. I mean, the only real weakness I found with the games was that the combat just felt pointless, really. Yeah. It's, it felt like every episode had to have one fight, and then you just, it was basically just a bunch of QTE. You just, you just pressed the button yeah. to show it up on the screen, and then it didn't really matter because none of the fables died anyway, because they're all so tough. They can't, yeah. I'm not going to go too much into the whole deal of um, Telltale's major flaw, I believe, uh, in that they so, like, they push really heavily the whole, your choices yeah. really make this game and it really doesn't it's a strength of the game though that when you play it once and you only play it once you feel that you are making these monumental decisions yeah. like oh my god who should i chase should i chase guy x or should i chase guy y this is such a big deal oh my god but in the end like next episode it's not gonna matter much anyway you're mostly gonna find out the same information yeah uh, w once you reach the end of the game you're still gonna be roughly in the same situation and then they do the work to the end where like okay i'm gonna point out everything that's happened through the years so like you really get to look back at your choices but in the long run, it's mostly the same. Okay, so now, the big moment, and I, I'm, I'm nervous. I, I, I <laughs> honestly, I can't think what this will be. I have a mild suspicion, but I'm not sure. So let's just go. Rithian, what is your game number one of 2014? My number one 
of 2014 is Call of Duty Advanced... No, Jesus Christ, Oh my no. God, you <laughs> give me a heart attack. <laughs> oh my God, I very nearly had a heart attack oh, there. Oh, good God. Oh it's, my God. Oh, that was such oh a God. disappointment. Oh God. No, okay, no. Okay. Let's not even dwell on that. I don't even want to think about it. No. Okay, okay. The real number one of mm -hmm. 2014 is Dark Souls 2. Ah, now that okay. was a yes. hell of a game. The thing that always kept me away from Dark Souls 1 was everyone saying like, oh man, it's so hard. It's like the hardest card game of ever. You're gonna yeah. die and die it so hard. And I was like, that's, that's not really what I want from Whatever. games. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to die. That just seems <laughs> cruel and pointless. I, I, I like mean, my life. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I want to see stuff happen. I wanna, you know. And then Dark Souls 2 came out and I played it. And yeah, it was hard. It was it was hard. Mm. I died a lot mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning. I remember at a certain point where my very first character I made, which was uh, like a caster, I went to one one of the two harder areas to go to in the very beginning. Yeah. And I went up against with this scrawny little caster who shot this weak little lightning bolt or whatever. And there was this 20 foot tall armored guy with a <laughs> massive axe and he he always like he, i had just an fhp yeah that i could survive one hit oh but the second God. i died yeah just and gone. i walked in and i died and i respawned and i had to run back to find my souls and i found my souls and then died and yeah. i had to run back in and find my souls again and find my souls and i managed to beat the first one yes and i went oh to the second one the second one killed me yes. and i had to go again and i died and i swear to god this this was at least two or three hours yeah. I sat doing this very thing. And you went through it. You took that. And I that. don't understand why I didn't stop. Yeah. I, I, I never really understood why. Because normally I don't take that shit for long. Like My, my time is more valuable, I think, than yeah. to stick through this sort of game. But for some reason, I just I was just I started to get stubborn. I wanted to beat him. I really, really, I, I can do this. I know I can. And so eventually I did beat him and stuff, and then I just started to take a look back and so what did I do? What did I do wrong? And I, I kept learning and it's like, I don't want to play this character anymore. So I, I made a new character, which was um, actually originally like a dual wheel type of guy, but mm. I soon enough picked up a shield. And then I went like a different path, which was different in a, difficult in a different way, because it was like more smaller dudes rather than yeah. the big major ones. And I felt like the difficulty curve was smoother and better. And I just I just got engrossed in this world. Like it just took hold of me. And I just realized how long it's been since like I played a proper brawler like this. Because I played games like Devil May Cry and so on, and they're just awesome. And God of War, they're just really awesome. But it's just such high pace tempo. It's just like you fly across the entire screen and unload 40 hit combos and there's millions of explosions and they're just like adrenaline pumping games. Yeah. They're just like made to make you feel badass. Dark Souls does not really make you feel badass. <laughs> it makes you feel weak. It makes you feel mortal. It makes you feel mortal and you die and you die and you die and you die and yeah. it's a punishing death because you die and you lose your total max Everything, health yeah. until you get back your humanity and it, oh my god it was tough but I kept going and I and I steadily just I felt like I became better I became better as a person mm. as as well as the minor increases my my uh, character got as well I became better as a player and I started yeah. to deal with these things so much better I got smarter I got quicker I got better reflexes I learned how to control my character better and and I kept going and I started facing tougher bosses and every time you step into this new area there was a big giant difficult boss and I, you learned the pattern and you got them and it was such a satisfying feeling of slowly just conquering this world on your own as this tiny little undead and the the way the story was told to you was so different from us. You didn't have cutscenes. Yeah. You didn't have like I mean you had the intro cutscene where people talked a lot, but otherwise, like the story just came to you so slowly through like yeah. just reading item descriptions and stuff. And that was really interesting. Like it was just cool to sort of get to explore the world on your own and like finding these messages and stuff and having these short vague phantom moments of like slowly interacting a little bit with mm. another character comes to join you for one boss fight and like worst case he can maybe wave at you or drop uh, like a thing that says hello yeah <laughs> or, like very good and that's like pre-made <laughs> voices <laughs> like, yeah and that's it you don't really have any sort of other interaction with people it all felt so you felt so alone yeah in this hostile world and then you slowly got better and you you got this awesome sword and you learn how to block with your awesome shield and you started dodging like a pro and i made it well over like 
halfway through the game before I figured out what weight does to your roll. Like yeah. the more heavy armor you have, the quicker and the slower you can roll through and dodge things. And that was like a revelation there. And then yeah. I went to do my first stat respec and started putting points into faith so I could throw lightning bolts. And, you know, I embraced the whole uh, philosophy of being a true brother of the sun, a sun bro, <laughs> you know. Praise the sun and yeah. oh man, it it was such an experience and I didn't think I always thought like I'm gonna give it a go because other people like it so much but I don't think it's my type of game mm. but it really really was and I spent about 70 hours of that uh, and and I loved it. Excellent. I think one thing I've taken away from your list is that it's all games that you can tell your own story in. So like Shadows of Mordor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Wolf Among Us, and. Um, and Dark Souls 2, it's all games that you have crafted your own story in it. And I, I think that's I think very that's, you. I that's think that's very, very true. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because I feel that games are way more valuable if mm. they create an experience that you can share somehow. Um, yeah. Just by like telling people about it. Because that's always, to me, what really drives me to get a game. Yeah. Is when, when people have awesome stories from playing it, you know, like if, if people play something pretty straightforward, there's not many things they can say about it. You know, I, I stepped into the room and I shot a bunch of people and it was really fun. Yeah. Like, all right, well, that's cool. But if they can tell me an awesome story of like what they were doing in Dark Souls 2 when they stepped into a room and they figured out they could actually pull this lever and that would make people fall down into the lava. And if they actually <laughs> backed away, the big giant thing would fall over and he could jump yeah. from the back. Or like, I made the decision in Wolf Among Us to um, burn the tree or not burn the tree and yeah. this meant that eventually blah blah and then I played the game it's like oh really because I did the opposite thing and yeah. that just makes me want to play the games more and I think that's what makes me more passionate about these games yeah. I want to talk about the games more and that's what makes them really stick around in my mind when it comes mm. down to looking back over a whole year of what I've enjoyed the most awesome well thanks very much for joining me today Rhythian thank you it's for having me it was very entertaining pleasure. talking about it actually yeah no I could listen to you talk for ages to be honest <laughs> like <laughs> especially but yeah just you choosing um, World of Warcraft at number 5 I was like whoa yeah. whoa no this is <laughs> I don't know what I believe shock, in anymore yeah. <laughs> but that's excellent anyway have a good evening Rydian and you I'll too. see you next time see ya bye, bye.